I recently came across this little plug here. This is the CloudFree Smart Plug 2, and it is already flashed with Tasmoda. That makes it super simple to be able to integrate this into Home Assistant. I recently did a video on the S31 where I had to go in and solder some pins on and then flash Tasmoda and then connect that to Home Assistant. Well, in this case, we're going to connect it directly to Home Assistant because it's already flashed. So let's get it unboxed and get it into Home Assistant. This is the cloud free smart plug, and this is the box that comes in. It says it has energy monitoring, Wi Fi connection, open firmware, which is Tasmoda, and works with MQTT. Uh, this is a 120 AC uh, volt AC plug. And of course, like I said, it comes with Tasmoda. So let's see what's in the box. Of course, we get our typical literature with a quick, quick start guide. And since this is Tasmoda, um, it'd be interesting to see how this quick start guide works with uh, Home Assistant or whether they talk about it. And then the plug is just a plug, nothing fancy about it. That's all that's in the box. And then we have the plug itself, which is just a standard US based. 110 volt plug has a uh, 15 amp load 1800 watts general loose uh, general use and it's a 2.4 gigahertz only plug and of course it's their model x10s and then of course the power switch on front with a little light that tells you what to do so let's go ahead and get this installed into home assistant and see what it does Okay, the plug is in the wall. It's got power. There's a blue light on the front, so I know it's up and running. So the first thing the quick start guide says to do is connect to the Tasmoda. And it's in, if you look at the quick start guide here, it tells you the Tasmoda underscore something Wi Fi network. So I'm going to connect to that on my PC. And I have, there's no password required. So I've got it connected now. And I'm going to go to 192.168.4.1, which is the IP address. Again, it mentions here in the quick start guide. And I get a, an option to configure my Wi-Fi uh, network. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to put in, and I guess you can do more than one, uh, one AP access point, but I'm going to do one access point. And then the, the password for that. And I'm going to save it. And now it's trying to connect the device to the network. And we can verify that this is working by going to our router or Wi-Fi access point or whatever and seeing if it gets a or shows up in our network. I'm going to search by uptime over here. And you can see here that now I have an IP address of 172.16.1.147. And it is up and running. So I can now put that here. And now I have essentially the Tasmoda interface that you would see on anything else. And you can also see that this device does provide power monitoring. Nothing is currently plugged into it, but it is available for power monitoring. So the next step I'm gonna do is go back into Home Assistant and I am going to connect to this device using the, the dashboard. So in Home Assistant, I'm going to go to my supervisor and my Tasmoda admin panel, open the web UI, and I only have one device currently on there. This is the Tasmoda, this is the Sonoff S31 device that I already flashed with Tasmoda by doing all the soldering and stuff that I had to do. You can already see how quickly I got the other plug up and running, the cloud free, uh, cloud free plug. And so now going into the menu, I have two options. I can either scan, do an auto scan for new devices using the IP range. Since I've already found the IP address looking at the router, I know where it is. It's going to be quicker for me just to scan the IP address in. So under devices, I can do a list and that will give the option to add a device. And I can enter the device IP address and I can search for it. And it's, I haven't set any password or, or username on it yet. So it found the device and I'm going to give it a name. 
and I'm going to call it study plug. I'm going to include it in the all off category. I'm going to protect, I could protect it from powering on, powering off like I did on any TAS motor device. And I'm going to save this configuration. And now the device is added and you really can't see it, but it does say back. This interface is kind of wonky with coloring. And now I have two devices running. And in fact, one thing to note here too, is that this plug is running version 9.3.1 of Tasmoda. And that's what it shipped with. I bought it about uh, two weeks ago. And the freezer plug, which is the one I flashed uh, with, that had Sonoff on it, I flashed it with Tasmoda has 9.4. So this is telling me I need to do an upgrade. So let me click on study plug. And now I'm in the, the main menu directly from the device itself. And I'm going to click on firmware upgrade. I'm going to upgrade by web server. And I'm going to start the upgrade. And it's going to go down and download the upgrade from the internet and put the newest version of Tasmoda on the plug. And you can actually see now that we're on Tasmoda 9.5. If we go back to our device list and we refresh this, we can now see that we have version 9.5, which now means the freezer plug is on an older version. That's fine. You can see a couple things here. Number one, I did a firmware update over the air. I just clicked the, the button to download it from the website and it just did everything like it's supposed to. Now, what we have to do to be able to make this usable in Home Assistant, as you've seen in the S31 video, is we need to go in and configure MQTT. So I click on the, the gears and it's loading here. I want to give this a friendly name. I'm going to call this study plug again. And the power state will be turn on relays on as last saved. Uh, and then save that. All right, our configuration is saved. Now I'm going to go over to MQTT. The MQTT host is going to be the home assistant or wherever you have your MQTT broker. I'm running the MQTT broker on my home assistant instance. So it's the same IP as, as home assistant. It's got the standard port. MQTT client name is important because I want to be able to identify that. And I'm going to do this without spaces this time, study plug. I'm going to leave the T, uh, TLS fingerprint alone. The MQTT login username is the login for your broker. Whatever you, username you uh, created for the ability to log into your broker is what you're going to put here. In this case, I use that. And then of course, the same thing for your MQTT password. And then your MQTT topic. Again, I'm going to set this to the same name as the plug. And I'm going to leave the full topic and all the rest of the settings on MQTT alone so that it will be able to be auto discovered in Home Assistant and do what it's supposed to do. So I'll save this and then we'll jump over to Home Assistant and see if it picks it up. Okay, now that we have that configured, for MQTT, what we can do is we can go into what I like to call, what I like to use as the MQTT Explorer, and we can see that we have the device, the plug talking to my Home Assistant instance. So I, this is my Home Assistant instance where I sent the MQTT traffic from this plug, and if I look at the uh, Tasmoda topic here, I should see two devices, which I do. One is my freezer plug that I originally had, and the other is my new study plug. And you can see that here as well. And now it's saying it's a topic of Tasmoda. So this is a good troubleshooting step. This means that we did not set the topic correctly in the device. And so instead of reporting as study plug, it is reporting as free as Tasmoda, which is not what you want necessarily because you might have multiple Tasmoda items. So what we need to do is go back in here in the configuration and just double check that we have the correct, uh, the correct topic set or the correct name for that. So in, under MQTT, we have a MQTT client name of study plug. We have an MQTT topic of study plug. And so all of that looks fine. What I need to do then is I want to go into the device itself. So I'll go back over here to the device list and I'll click on study plug and that will take me to the actual on device web browser. That's going to give me the ability to configure stuff. So I'm going to go configuration and look at MQTT and see what it says here. So we do have a plot, a topic of study plug 
And we do have a client of study plug. So that is all correct. And this is something that I've found that I've had to do in the past. I'm going to click on configure other, and I'm going to come down here to device name. It says study plug, but it's not really changing it for some reason. So I'm going to type in study plug here, and I'm just going to keep it one uh, without a space in it. And I'm going to leave the friendly name the way it is. And we're going to save that. And the configuration is now saved. And if we watch the MQTT Explorer, we should see this change to study plug instead of Tasmoda, which then will make it show up correctly within our Home Assistant instance. And right there, you see it change. Now it's study plug. So if we go back to developer tools or go into developer tools, we can search for study plug and we should see these entities show up now. So there's study plug and we have the energy apparent power, uh, energy current, energy factor, energy power, all this stuff is now here where we didn't have that um, in, correct before. So now I have this fully configured and the next step is to actually do something with it in Home Assistant. Now, just to see that this is actually doing something that's measuring power correctly, I've gone ahead and I've plugged in a plug, a charger, one of those little uh, USB chargers, and it's charging my battery. So I wanna look at the power consumption of that device and see if it's actually measuring any power. And right now it doesn't show that it is, and we'll see if it updates here. I don't know what the update frequency is because I didn't check that, but there is an option for update frequency in the settings as well. I mean, we, we may want to change that. So let me go to configuration for that and see if we can set the update frequency to update more often than what it is doing now. So again, under MQTT, we're going to come down here and we're going to do telemetry period in seconds. That's five minutes. So I want to make this uh, 30 seconds. I mean, it's plugged in the wall. I want near real time uh, update. So I want it to give me something more, uh, more often than just every five minutes. So we'll save that. And I'm going to pull up my Explorer here. And I'm just going to look at the sensors under, under telemetry here for that study plug. And I'm going to see how often it updates. And here's the values that are showing up for the sensor. And what will happen is as these update, you will see it change from red to green. And that's the changes that just denotes what the changes are. So we'll watch and see if this updates. And when that updates, then Home Assistant will also update. Let me go back over to this other screen as well. One thing to note is that whenever you save a configuration in Tasmoda, it goes into a backlog period. And that allows multiple changes to be sent to a device before it does its final configuration and reboots everything. So right now we're in the backlog. So it takes a little bit of time for the change to go to the plug. And then once the change occurs, then we'll have that 30 second update interval and we can see if it changes. So back over here, we're now waiting for the changes to con the configuration changes to show up and then we'll see the actual update for power usage here. And if I don't get any power usage, that's a problem with the plug. So we'll just see, I know for sure that the battery is charging on that device. And having said all that, one other thing we need to check, and this is going to make me look silly, which probably is true, is that probably the device is turned off. Let me go to the list. Sure enough, it's off. So obviously we won't get any readings. Again, another troubleshooting step. If it doesn't do what you think it's going to do, go back and check your settings. I just didn't turn it on. There it is. Now it's turned on. Now you'll see potentially updates here, which there it is. Energy is four watts. We should see an update in our telemetry for our modules here. And once it updates here via MQTT, then it will show up again in Home Assistant. So we've got a 30 second update interval for our telemetry. And now we can see that our old power readings were all zero. And now we have new power readings here in the green. Going over to Home Assistant, we now also see that we have energy voltage of 120 volts. We have power 13, reactive 16. Uh, the current draw right now is uh, 16 hundredths of a, or 16.16, and then 20 for the apparent power. So here we are, we're getting our readings in. And now we can use this in Home Assistant in our graphs and other things. 
And let me show you an example of what I did with the S31 plug, which is exactly what you can do with this plug here. If I go into my Grafana, this is all the information that I'm getting from the plug right now. So I have energy total, or today, energy yesterday, energy total, and this is the last 24 hours. If I do a last two days, you should see energy today. And you notice that it's doing this. It's resetting the values every day, which is a Tasmoda thing. And my energy total over time since I've had it plugged in. And then my freezer plug um, op operation when it's actually pulling data. So that's an example of what you can do here with that plug. In addition, you can set automations up to turn the plug on and off at certain times. You just control it like anything else you do on your Home Assistant dashboards or or devices or whatever you use that for. So comparing the two, one thing to note as as of this filming of the video, I bought this from Cloudfree, not sponsored. I paid for everything. Uh, they didn't tell me anything here. This is a single plug, and it's thirteen dollars. I can buy at the time of this video again, I can buy a double pack of these uh, Sonoff plugs for about $23. So there's a little bit of a hit on the pricing of the plug. For all intents and purposes, and I'm looking at the specifications on this plug here, this is 15 amp plug, just like a standard plug is. And the Smart Plug 2 is also a 15 amp plug. And this is this is US volts, right? 120 volts US. So both of these run the same capacity. The form factor is pretty close to the same. The only real difference I see between these two plugs is the, um, the price of the plug. You get one for $13, you get two for 23. Uh, and, and that's pricing wise. Now, to be fair, you have to open up the, the Sonoff plug. You have to solder. You have to uh, flash it from a PC or whatever, and then put it all back together and then you can use it. So you're basically opening up a device and having to tinker with it versus the smart free plug that just is already to come, is already shipped with Tasmoda flashed on it. And all you have to do is configure the Wi-Fi and move on. So there is a convenience factor that you're paying for. I think it's probably worth it for most people, especially if you're not into soldering, if you're not, if you don't want to open up the electronics and mess with stuff and potentially break it. For example, I opened one of the S31 plugs and I, when I went to solder it, I broke the plug, the, the actual soldering, the pad melted off. And so I can't actually flash Tasmoda on that one. So I basically, stuck with uh, Sonoff only on that plug. So you don't have to do any of that stuff. So the difference between the $13 and the $23 is, is strictly purely convenience is what you're paying for, everything else being the same. So that's just a quick look at the Cloudfree Smart Plug 2 that runs Tasmoda, comes flash with Tasmoda. So I hope this was a helpful video for you. I hope you like it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed so you know when I launch new videos or I go do my live streams. And if you have any questions, put those down in the comments below. And also I'm available on Discord uh, from time to time and I'll answer your questions there as well. And we'll see you on the next video.